welcome to the Ireland chapter of PMI, it's our lunchtime series of webinars. And I'm going to say welcome and hello to Terence O'Donnell, who's joining me today. Hi, Terence. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. So I think some of our members will be very familiar with Terence, as he is a founding member of the Ireland chapter of PMI, and he is also one of the past presidents. He has extensive project management experience in both the public and the private sector, and he is currently the projects and consulting director at Auxilian. So there are a lot of accolades. There's too many to mention. Among them, he is he does have a master's in project management and he holds an, a range of our industry accreditations, PMP, PGMP and PFMP. But today he's here to talk to us about Agile. Agile is goodish. So much has been written about this and, and Terence wrote a, a short article during the week as well. He's going to use this session to examine some of the claims made around Agile project management. So before I hand over to Terence, just if you take a look at your screen there, you'll see that we do plan to use the Menti poll today. Terence does have some questions for you, and we also want you to interact throughout the webinar using the Menti poll. We'll take your questions as we go throughout the session. So if you can grab your phone or open another browser on your laptop, go to menti.com and use the code five six three one four seven one one and i can see uh, somebody has already done it there um in particular if i just um call it out here uh terence does want to gauge your agile experience so in the menti poll we've one question here which is um like, do you have beginner in between or expert level experience in agile because terence will use that information to adjust his talk accordingly okay so Terence, I will start the hand over to you. I think as you can see here, we've got one expert on, on board. So guys, grab your phone or open another browser, go to menti.com and use the code 56314711 and uh, let us know your experience level. So I think you've kind of got a mix here. Terence is already coming in from, from people that they're, um, um, I'm warming you up guys. So I'll keep the poll up there for another minute or two. And um, I, Terence, I'll share with you. But in the meantime, I'll stop sharing my screen and I'm going to hand over to you, Terence. Okay. Thanks, Katrina. Okay, perfect. And thanks for joining us today. So hopefully you can you can all see that. I assume you just give it a nod. It's up to it me. Yep, perfect. If you just want to put it into presentation mode, but yeah, it's up on the screen. No. Perfect. Very there good. you go. Take it away. Okay. So first of all, I'm really delighted to be here today. Um, as Katrina mentioned, I have a, a long history um, with the PMI in Ireland. And the first time I was involved in it, I had black hair and I was about three or four stone lighter, you know, but you can't stop age and progressing the years at this point but um just to give you a little bit of a context and a you know an agenda for for today um i'm more used to doing this in a, with an audience in front of me so i've given quite a few of these in the last 18 months and the way i get around it is i i have a i imagine there's a bunch of emojis that i'm talking to right um uh, as part of that uh trick to try and uh, remember uh, the audience in front of me. Um, so the first thing I have here is, look, why listen to me, um, particularly in this topic? Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about where Agile came from quite quickly. i um, not going to spend too much time on it, but I'm conscious that there's a few people on the call who may not have as much appreciation of Agile and Agile project management as others might have. So that, along with some additional context in terms of the world of Agile is where I'm going to start first. And then I'm going to talk about a particular set of uh, actions, points, events that happened mid, mid year this year. And I'm going to call it the who moved my cheese moment. So I'm quite uh, a lit supporter of Agile, mainly because I've, I've come from the dinosaur world of the traditional project management space. Uh, and I've spoken at length at different conferences previously in terms of, you know, comparing and contrast Agile versus traditional stuff. And I have got beyond uh, the questioning phase of Agile. It definitely has a place. And my background is IT. 
software development. So there's no question when it comes to product development, the software development, Agile definitely has its place in the world. But some claims in recent months has drawn my, I wouldn't say ire, but definitely my eyebrow got shifted again. There are a number of points with the traditional project management space that I'm going to drift into just to remind people um, of the merits of some of the core principles that brought project management to the table in the first place. I think it's been lost a little bit in terms of the clamor for all things agile. And then, as Katrina mentioned, I, I put a posting slash blog out last week just to set the scene for, for this particular uh, discussion uh, where I use the analogy of restaurants and menus. And I made the point that, you know, there's a, a push now uh, in terms of the C-suite, particularly in organizations, not necessarily those who are responsible for projects, but at a much wider perspective where, you know, if, if Agile isn't being served up in, in the restaurant, they won't go in. And there's a question mark in terms of like, should, should the restaurants or should the traditional project management eateries uh, still be uh, promoted as an alternative and as a way and a means of actually delivering projects. So that theme going, going through the, the, the discussion is part of that. And then I have a similar consideration to take that analogy. And there's really three things I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk particularly about, you know, Agile and Agile project management. Um, and just on that point, I think that there's occasionally there are, there are words or terms or approaches that breaches the management border from project management across that divide you know for example you know critical path work breakdown structures you know they have over the years have become second nature in the lexicon of management as well as project management i think agile has, has done the same thing so when you look back at the last i don't know 18 months two years there has been a serious push for agile from an organizational perspective and i think that's part of the challenge in terms of what are we talking about here? Are we talking about the best way of managing projects and therefore the project management methodology, which has an agile anchor, right? Whatever version, are we talking about agility from an organizational point of view? They are two different things. And I think a lot of the stuff that's been written of late is because it's, it's now more focused on the agile transformation agenda, which is a different thing entirely. The second thing is that we're talking about is planning. So there's a, there is this uh, supposition and those who don't really understand Agile well enough will make the point that they stay away from detail planning. You know, change is welcome and adjust and so on and so forth. Um, but I don't think anybody who's uh, got their expertise in terms of Agile, whether they're scrum masters or otherwise, would actually suggest that projects should be done without planning. You know, projects need plans. There's no question about it, you know? So anything that softens that or dilutes it, you know, for me, there's, there's no place in, in project management or agile project management for that matter. There has to be a plan. How you develop, adjust, um, and move and so on and so forth, it's gotta be based on some sort of benchmark, whether it's detailed or high level, I don't really care, but there's gotta be a plan. And then the other point, which again is on that, wave of a crescendo of you know let's adopt all things agile is a particular leadership style that i, I see um expressed as a significant change in terms of how things are done uh, which is a servant leadership style um i want to talk a little bit about that too because it's another it's another area where you know people can get the wrong end of the stick and it also raises the point in terms of there's, there's a, the whole idea of command and control uh, is now dead. You know, you can't, you can't be overly instructive for your team. So there are some question marks around that as well, because, you know, servant leadership, as you'll see, I'll talk about it shortly. It's a, it's a philosophy. It's a state of mind. It's not a checklist, you know, uh, and therefore uh, there's, there's elements of that that's worth exploring a little bit. So that's the context. That's the agenda. Look, quite less to me. I'm not going to dwell too much on this. Um, Katrina's already given me my background a little bit. 
I know I'm getting there when I, I start adding the number of years experience I have in terms of, of managing projects. Um, but when it comes to this particular topic, uh, you know, I've run PMOs uh, of which setting up structures, approaches, project management methodologies, all that's been part of it. Um, and I'm reasonably well qualified and I'm, I've got lots and lots of scars. So um, hopefully those scars have got to the point where I've now developed informed opinions. I'm not saying I'm always right. And there'll be a few things I'll say in this call where I'd expect some pushback, right? But I think debate and targeting some debate around some of the claims and adjusting those claims slightly, uh, I found that those who understand the topic very well um, would share some of the similar uh, concerns, but more about that in a second. So, you know, let's just put Agile back on the map again and remind people where it came from. Uh, I used this model a few years ago at a conference. I called the presentation, believe it or not, Agile is Goodish. And the term itself is linked to uh, a British comedian called Dave Gorman. I know some of you may be familiar with him, where he had a series a few years ago called Life is Goodish. And an on balance, you know, when you look at the traditional way of managing projects and you layer in the innovation and the thinking associated with Agile, especially when it comes to product development and software development as part of that uh, whole cycle, there's no question that it brings, you know, a lot more to the table in terms of products and prototypes and so on and so forth and the way of getting that cycle uh, in terms of a minimal viable product through the process. Um, when you look at the sort of history of it, um, I can't even remember when the first PIMBAC popped out, but I think it was uh, early to mid 80s. But the Agile journey really probably started when Scrum appeared in the early 90s. And at one point in the mid 90s, it was codified. So there were some rules around it. And then we had the famous um, Agile Manifesto, which was published 20 years ago. So somebody was telling me, well, Agile is 20 years, 20 years here, that's on, the, that's on the go 20 years. Yeah, it may have been on the go 20 to 25 years, but for me, it only arrived in terms of seriously being adopted as a set of techniques probably five, six years ago. And there's been a, a bit of an exponential um, application and adoption of the techniques in recent years. You know, uh, when it comes to recognition, uh, the previous version of the PIMBOK, the sixth edition, which was released in uh, 2018, it had uh, a fairly substantial element of the new standard, which was geared to Agile. In fact, for those of you who are PMI members and uh, have all uh, the standards involved, you might recall there was an accompanying set of standards around Agile. So for me, it really arrived in terms of the recognition within the profession around that time frame. And I don't know how many people on the call have managed to get their hands on the new edition. It was my birthday a few a few weeks back, and one of my daughters got me the new edition of the Pinback. I'm not kidding. The same daughter got me the, the uh, previous version for a Christmas present. I'm not sure what that says about me or my daughter, but nonetheless, but in the new version, again, it is front and center. And in the revised version of the new PMP qualification, I think I remember there was a speaker on this forum a few weeks ago talking about it. 50% of the PMP uh, question database is geared to Agile, right? Um, so coming from back in 91 and certainly from the manifesto, it took quite a while for you know agile to make its way to the point where it's now being accepted as an absolutely viable and important set of techniques to run projects i'm just wondering make sure we don't throw the baby out with the water the bathwater as part of that whole process so when you look at and i'm going to go back to the menu analogy for those who didn't get a chance to see that blog i put out last week i've talked about the traditional project management fairs versus the Agile project management uh, menu, very high level, right? So obviously when it comes to the traditional way of managing projects, and I hate to use the term waterfall because, you know, waterfall is just a, a, a label which uh, 
is, is framed more around the phases of the work that's involved and the fact you've got gates and formality as part of that whole process, which is what traditional party management tends to focus on. So you've got in-depth planning, right? And scope and requirements very early on are trying to be tied down. And after that, you're looking at anchor points and command and control, generally speaking, uh, to get from the beginning to the end. And you have change control and earn value and all those techniques to actually check where you are against the baseline and how things are progressing, et cetera, et cetera. So lots of formality and static um, challenges around how that all works. And of course, in the, in the, in the new world of Agile, there is still planning, right? And that's a point that you know, Agile practitioners would actually like to emphasize quite often. You don't, you don't make it up as you go along. It may not be the same level of detail in terms of specifications and requirements, because of the need for flexibility, but there needs to be a clear plan. Slightly different then in terms of um, progression, it's inspection, you know, it's minimal viable product, adapt as you go along, et cetera, et cetera. And we have prioritized backlogs, right? Retrospectives, completely different way of, of doing things in terms of getting the work done. Now, back to our ski lodge, somewhere in um, the US back in 91, the manifesto around Agile promotes uh, four values, right? And they're on the screen here, okay? So individual and interactions over and above process and tools. The focus is on a working product, which is the minimum viable product mindset over comprehensive documentation and requirements and specifications. Customer collaboration, have them in the tent, part of the the scrums and even part of the sprints occasionally and have that in there instead of you know delivering to the specification requirements as per the contract and then be more flexible uh, in terms of change as opposed to you know having a, a plan that's not um that flexible in that context nobody's going to argue with that i think the other point i would like to make here is look they favor the left-hand side over the right-hand side. Somewhere along the line, that sometimes gets translated as we're ignoring the right-hand side, right? There are processes associated with Agile, irrespective of which version you're looking for, right? Whether it's a safe framework, whether it's Scrum, whether it's Kanban, there are processes. Similarly, there is documentation, right? Uh, it may not be specification orientated in terms of the the product orientation for for traditional there's going to be contracts right and um, there may be some flexibility in terms of maybe function point analysis which is an old term uh, tied back to you know there's the idea of the product will have so many functions and based on that you can then progress based on the delivery of the functions um, with flexibility built in there but nonetheless there's a contract and at the end of the day there is a plan right it's how flexible that plan is and the need to make sure that change where it makes sense is adopted as a, and embraced as opposed to rejected. So for those of you who are older PMPs on the call, you may recall there were always questions on change and change management in the PMP exam. And one of the questions that was typically asked was, what's the first thing you do when you encounter change on a project? And in short, the answer was, you look for a way to try and avoid uh, having the change in the first place. So in other words, influence it, the situation so the change was not required. That's seriously old school thinking, you know. Um, but the key point around this is, you're not saying it's left-hand side only for Agile. You're saying, look, the left-hand side is much more dominant in your thinking, uh, while at the same time, you still have processes right through to having a plan. I've come across people who tell me it's the left-hand side. We're not doing the right-hand side, right? Crazy stuff. The other kitchen rules associated with, with the Agile world then is the Agile principles, right? So I pulled a graphic from summer, and that's you look at the screen there. I'm not going through them all in detail, but customer sat, change, self-organized teams, reflection, right? You know, collaboration, right? All of those would be principles against which, you know, planning and delivery is, is geared. And the last thing I just want to 
you know, flag up his, you know, why head to the agile restaurant? You know, so what are the marketing words or lines that they use to actually attract people into to the agile world? Uh, this is a a word cloud that I, I pulled together a couple of years ago uh, when I surveyed about, I think it was about 60 uh, traditional project managers from the, the dinosaur world. Um, and I asked a series of questions as part of the research in terms of their attitude to, uh, to Agile, current, and when it came into play initially. And I asked them to position, you know, what positive words they saw uh, when when um, when Agile came to mind. Um, I didn't filter this. There's one or two of these words I wouldn't be so sure about, but all very positive. There were negative words, but not for today's conversation. And then when you start to take a look at how all that has developed to the point, we now have an agile a la carte menu. So there's a continuum uh, in terms of project management methodologies between the agile poll and the traditional project management poll, right? And then the PMI speak, they'll talk about it from the point of view of adoptive versus predictive. So predictive project management methodologies would be clearly the more traditional waterfall ones, whereas the adoptive ones indicating you know flexibility change and so on and so forth would be the other the other part of that continuum with iterations and so on and so forth and somewhere in the middle the challenge of course is there's a serious uh, a la carte menu when you start to pull together all of the variations of agile that's out there now some of these um are obviously more dominant than others right most people are familiar with your scrums your kanbans your sprints you know, safe is becoming a little bit more uh, of a reference point in terms of the overall framework. You know, extreme programming XP is one we're using ourselves, for example. Um, so you can pick your poison to to a large extent. I think over the over the next few years, this might become a little bit more um, condensed, and there'll be a little bit more trending around what makes sense rather than having so many to choose from on the menu. And serving the meal up. Right, this is a model I pulled from um, Net Solutions. Right, this is typically what it looks like within, you know, your Scrum Sprint and Agile delivery world in terms of the, of the whole process. You know, so what could be wrong with applying Agile across the board in that one? So there's the context. Okay, and as I said, yeah, you know, I'm a reluctant. Uh, supporter for our for of agile at least in the in the early days because I thought the, the claims are a little bit too extreme, but you know what I got on board. And as I said previously, you know there is occasionally a scenario where, you know, project management terms which agile agile has its roots in project management, right? So the agile project management approach and all the things we just talked about, you know. But occasionally you have a, 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 a word or a phrase or a, an approach which, you know, drifts into or breaches the border into management speak. So now you have situations where, you know, the wider management community are, are talking about agile uh, as if it's the silver bullet for all of their management problems. And the context of that is that applying agile to areas uh, functions and challenges that are nothing to do with projects has now emerged as part of the the, the discussions and the articles that I've seen. So this is the point where I went, there was a, a who moved my cheese moment earlier this year. So I went back to do a little bit of a, a lecturing this year um, and I give a I give the project management module to my old alma mater, I used to be the professor of project management, Newell, and went back. And I give a, a module on project management to the current batch of MBAs. There may be one or two of you on the call. Hello, if you're still there. Um, and I give I gave the group a number of challenges in terms of their continuous assessment element of the program. And one of them included comparing and contrasting agile and traditional project management. Uh, and when I was marking and reviewing their submissions, there was one in particular, and I was sitting where I'm sitting now, actually, on my with my, you know, crumbed, 
keyboard laptop reading um, a particular submission which uh, had a reference to a TED talk and the TED talk had expanded the application of IGL to the point where it suggested or whoever the person was suggested that IGL could be used uh, as a technique for raising children. Now, I, I spluttered my coffee and uh, I don't know if any of you ever experienced uh, having a tick in your eye. I, I get a tick in my eye occasionally where my eyelid involuntarily, you know, ticks. And I'm sometimes of the mindset is trying to get my brain's attention, you know. So this idea that, you know, we can take Agile and adopt it as a broader general approach Right, has for me polluted a little bit of the claims that legitimately are there in terms of how Agile can be a contributor to managing projects. So when you look at traditional project management, it's worth reminding people, you know, and I probably have a few years on most of you, when I got into project management first, you know, uh, uh, one of the things that project management put on the table was clear accountability. So that was one of the real reasons why it got it got it got rooted as a way of, of getting projects which are one-off activities done completed properly as opposed to you know operational management type skills there's a different type of skill set in here right and clarity in terms of who does what responsibility and accountability was actually the number one um reason why project management got a life in terms of uh, a way of getting things done now, there are lots of other things in there as part of the process. Um, but this idea of, you know, light planning, you know, a servant leadership style mindset, we don't need command and control anymore. You know, that's where some elements of um, Agile in terms of what's been pushed as that agenda, uh, you know, it does need to be questioned slightly. So there are three um broad areas i just want to talk a little bit about in terms of that similar consideration if you're sitting in an agile restaurant consuming the agile fair in terms of project management and i made this point a little earlier in the presentation where i said look let's just di differentiate and let's appreciate that there is a difference between agile as it's now being used uh, in the context of organizational transformation and agile project management right so agile project management we, we know for those of you familiar with it you know there are rules there are you know stand-ups daily weekly whatever it may be there's backlogs there's processes to get out the backlogs there's prioritization there are you know um tools and processes and techniques that depending on which version of agile you're using you apply and you bring to the table but it's structure right there are plans there's documentation right the whole um, expansion of Agile as a way of thinking and as a philosophy has now got to the point where, as I said, HR, raising families, family budgeting, you know, these are now uh, threads that you're seeing published as part of that process. I'm not saying they shouldn't be, but let's be clear, that's not the same as applying Agile to project management because project management, by definition, there is, you know, tangibility around that with the challenges of delivering projects where you've got the constraints of time, cost, quality. Those constraints doesn't disappear just because you use an Agile. And to be fair, Agile has got better because you know it brings that additional flexibility, but it hasn't forgotten what the challenges are to deliver that. When you now talk about Agile in a wider sense, this is, um, there's some work done by Bain, uh, I think it was 2020, and it, uh, it was published, I think it was HBR published this one as well, where they looked at the Agile manifesto and they positioned um, a version of this, which was the Agile leadership team. So think about, you know, a senior management team or an executive management team, you know, or a board, right, where they're looking at values in terms of how the organization works. These would be reflective of Look, we need to bring flexibility. We need to have agility and speed at the table, right? And they therefore looked at the four values I mentioned earlier 
and they reframed them with an organizational context, right? So again, individuals and directions, not process and tools, you know, so now you're into empowering teams, right? And I've seen that in lots of organizations I've worked with recently, right? Customer engagement, not rigid contracts, right? You can improve things, flexibility and so on and so forth. So you're now looking at taking what was initially a way of managing projects, right? And now taking that out of the box and looking at, well, actually, this is something that we can apply across the board. And that's why I meant when I said, said a little earlier, look, you know, uh, the claims of Agile is now getting blurred between organizational agility that's needed to actually develop a company and the project management version of Agile. They're not the same thing, but they're being discussed in the same in the same uh, sentence in some cases. Again, being again, uh, where bringing the Agile, I don't know, framework to the table and looking at, you know, an enterprise mindset around where Agile, you know, needs to be brought to the table and how agility can help an organization move from being static, which is what traditional project management ended up uh, having that persona with, as opposed to being a little bit more, I think, chaotic is not the word I would have chosen for, the, for their model, by the way, but, you know, the point being flexibility may be, may be more appropriate, but chaotic in the sense that less structure. So that's on one side, the statics on the other side. And you can see there when it comes to like planning, budgeting, review, well, you know, organizationally, you have know, rigid annual templates, right? Um, where, where if you go further up, we're a bit more flexible. We might do quarterly. We might do, you know, there's, there's different ways of doing that. But the whole point about what being looked at doing was taking what the philosophy of Agile was as how it was developed against the values and the principles and looking at putting a mapping in place to facilitate, well, from an organizational transformation point of view and, you know, yeah, developing a business, this is the kind of thing you're looking at. My key point about this is, look, when you're looking at the, the pluses and, and um, cons um, of Agile, be really clear. In our world, when we're managing projects, you know, we, we have particular accountabilities. We've got particular expectations in terms of what needs to be delivered. Whether it's a minimal viable product that we're going to use Agile to get there right, quite quickly, or whether it's, you know, the next bridge over the River Liffey, which probably needs a more traditional approach to managing projects, you know, it's all geared to delivering objectives or deliverables. When it comes to, you know, the broader brushstroke that I'm now seeing about the Agile space, you know, that's a philosophy and it's great, but just make sure you differentiate one with the other, right? And the claims that's associated with Agile as a, a way of thinking and so on and so forth, keep that separate in your thinking in terms of how Agile can be used to, 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 uh, to deliver projects. And I think in the blog I mentioned, look, now, now I'm hearing C-suite managers, you know, unless, unless Agile's on the, on the agenda and on the table, they don't want to go to those restaurants, you know? And um, this week, I'm doing a little bit of research myself and uh, Professor uh, Joe Pepper, actually we're doing it for the chapter, and we're looking at PMOs. And I was talking to uh, a CIO of a very well-known organization yesterday. And uh, in, in this case, the PMO reports into him um, because it's primarily focused on, on IT. And we talked about, you know, where next, you know, and he was telling me the biggest challenge that he has is resetting expectations in terms of how Agile can be adopted and used in some instances preferred as an approach to delivering service projects because his colleagues at the C-suite have an impression Right, which is as far away from where Agile started off from in the context of orientation to delivery in a different way. That orientation now is, has, has, has got lost in translation. So there's serious expectations that because Agile is how we're going to adopt things, that we can get there quicker and um, we can get there with a, a lot more expectation that we're going to get what we want. And that was his biggest challenge of all he'd be talked about. He's not the only one. Um, others that I've talked to and worked with the last few weeks, you know, have come up with sort of similar things in terms of how, how has this clamor got here, et cetera, et cetera. So key point, look, 
agile project management absolutely is its place at the table, right? Having delivered software development projects late and way over budget for myself for years, there's no way you can go back to that way of thinking. However, differentiate between agile as a philosophy that's now emerging as a mechanism to, to progress enterprises or businesses and agile project management, two different things. The second thing I wanted just to surface and throw up there is this idea that agile doesn't need planning, right? So you might recall um, the focus on agile is away from detailed specifications and therefore detailed planning, right? But I haven't come across anybody who is a practitioner of agile that will turn around and say, oh, there isn't a plan or there isn't documentation. There's some serious solid planning goes behind Agile in the same way that goes uh, to the traditional stuff. Maybe not as, you know, T-crossing and I-dotting, but it's there. And looking at, um, you know, some other material that is emerging in the management uh, world in terms of the, the, you know, HBR and Sloan, for example, which I tend to go look at because they're more practitioner oriented than the more traditional uh, academic uh, uh, articles. But this is one that appeared uh, actually only last week or the week before, where there was a, a a decent article in the in the review on titled "Planning Doesn't Have to Be the Enemy of Agile." You can see why that got my attention, right? I won't go through this in detail here, but most of you are familiar with, you know, um, Henry Fayol's mantra mindset around, you know, the need for planning, organizing, right, the command, control, coordination, and the whole idea of management by objectives, which is where project management, whether you want to call it traditional project management or just simply project management, which I would prefer, focused on what are we trying to do here? What are the objectives? Predictability, planning, right? That's where a lot of the reference points to good project management came from, right? And then when you look at where we where we got to now, right? Uh, again, another uh, recent article out of the review, right? Titled this time, "Have we taken Agile too far?" Which is going back to my point about, you know, Agile as a philosophy, and then trying to apply Agile to wider organizational challenges outside of the project management arena. So, Agile. According to Brian and Carr, they made the point highly effective tool for product development, especially software driven offerings. No argument. But as companies expand its use into new areas, budgeting, talent management, and we could go on, by the way, agile is too often used as an excuse to avoid careful planning and preparation. So this idea of shortcuts comes into play in terms of, you know, uh, because there's an emphasis on getting a minimal viable product, right? Getting a prototype, getting it done quickly. So instead of taking time for the careful thinking of a breakthrough product, teams get locked into this process, two week sprints, right? Um, you know, we'll add more to the backlog, we, you know, we'll reprioritize. And you think in sort of bite-sized chunks based on who you've got available in the team, and who's who's around for, for, for the for the script for the sprints linked back to whatever scrum was happening in the first place. So by definition, you end up with a slightly different challenge with agile, where you you know you can be focused on short-term thinking and maybe not enough emphasis on planning, right? Now that's not my words, right? It says Karen Bryan, and they, 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 it's worth reading that article um, if you haven't come across it. That's the whole idea of planning, right? And remember that the going back to the values we just mentioned from the start, you know, Agile's four values, one of them being, you know, responding to change as opposed to following the plan. Again, apologies to the broken record, you still need a plan, right? There is a has to be a plan. That plan would be a little more flexible, right? Um when you're you're looking at you know the, the agile product management world because change is embraced a bit more. And, you know, it's therefore not seen as a barrier to progression, but there still needs to be a plan and nobody's disagreeing with that in that context. Then the last, the last one um, to 
surface uh, as a discussion point is the idea of servant leadership. Okay, so again, I still do a bit of work um, with some companies in terms of coaching their their PMs, and in some cases, getting them ready for the PMP, right? And for those of you who have keep a, a, an eye on, you know, themes and, uh, you know, areas that have emerged, uh, you know, in terms of good practice and best practice, particularly when it comes to the PMI world, you will have noticed, and if you haven't, it won't take long for you to pick this up. There is a huge push on this idea of servant leadership. Okay. Um, now, when you look at leadership as a wider theme, you know, everybody uh, would be reasonably familiar with the idea that, you know, there's, everybody has a leadership style, right? And that leadership style tends to be your default in, in broad terms. Personally, I'm, I've always been more of a coach, right? Um, but every scenario, you know, especially when you're running projects, will need a certain style that you bring to the table to get that scenario dealt with. Occasionally, that means you might need to have more of an authoritarian and more of a command and control uh, approach to getting things done, you know, as long as, you know, you're conscious of the people and the resources involved in the conversation. But it's got to the point now where it's almost, if you don't adopt a servant leadership style, you're really not with it, okay? So a couple of things around that. This is a quote from um, uh, Dolakia from uh, uh, a very uh, edition of the Entrepreneur Europe a couple of years back where he rightfully makes the point, servant leadership is in vogue now. Reams of books, articles, podcasts, how to advice for acting like a servant leader, okay? Now, by the way, to some extent, I would, as an aside, make the point, the traditional project managers, you know, who would be more akin to the command control, linked back to the idea of absolute accountability, and ultimately, if the project failed, the project manager was held responsible Part of the, the reservations that some of those dinosaurs, and I used to be one of them, would have on this space as well, actually, in a servant leadership style, you know, you're puppeteering in the best sense of the word, right? And accountability gets diffused, right? Some would argue the accountability gets shared, right? But that clarity becomes a, a, a question point at times. So point that um, uh, Doki is making is, it's not, and you shouldn't look at it as a style necessary. It's more a philosophy. And that's the point I made a little early, not a checklist. So it's, it represents how the leader should try and do things, right, uh, as collectively as possible. But to suggest that servant leadership is your sort of default way of getting things done, I would seriously question that. And when it comes to that, you know, um, in the blog I put out last week, I, I did mention, you know, do you need a Gordon Ramsay in the kitchen or is it more, you know, um, Nigella or Jamie here is on the screen, you know, which kind of reflects a, a philosophy in terms of a roller together versus the more command to control. That servant leadership dimension, there's a few points I have here around, look, you know, it takes time to build that, right? So um, relationship building and networking and informal on that basis, I mean, I used to invest huge time in that. I never called myself a servant leader, right? But if you wanted to get things done, you always needed to get, you know, to the to the key stakeholders who are the influencers in the organization or the project, you know? That whole engagement, and to be fair, stakeholder management and stakeholder engagement is another um, thread that's, that pulls together that whole thinking. Servant leadership doesn't work with every organization. So there are certain organizations that are very formal, they're very structured, right? Certain industries have contractual mindsets around how that works. So several leadership won't, won't work in that context, you know, especially if you need quick decisions where the idea of consensus and opinion orientated, you know, you don't have the time for that. So if there's a major project that has to be done and time and schedules are a serious constraint, then more direction, right? albeit and done in the right way, uh, is what's needed. The other thing too sometimes is, you know, the team can lose sight of goals when it comes to that servant leadership piece. You know, you're, you're so focused on, you know, collectivism in that, that context, right? Um, but there's a balance to be struck between the purpose of the project, the objectives and deliverables that are needed, 
in terms of and how we should do that from a journey perspective. And the last one, and this is not exhaustive, but I'm putting these out to say, look, be careful not to overly subscribe to that servant leadership mindset. And believe it or not, the last one is, you know, the flip side of motivation is as a framed here, right? You know, servant leadership, for sure, because of that collective nature of what you're doing and how you're doing it, you know, can uh, motivate teams. But actually, that tends to be the start, you know. So that burst of motivation can actually dilute after a while, right? Um, and uh, it's quite difficult to keep the motivation levels to the right point once you have that that servant leadership style mindset. So look, there are the three takeaway points that I want you to maybe think about in terms of the the discussion, you know. So. When it comes to Agile and Agile project management, there's absolutely no doubt it may have taken 20 years to get here, but it's at the table now, deserves its place, not a question. Especially when it comes to product development, software development, you know. There are a number of things that has emerged or transpired the last 18 to 24 months. And the one in particular that's now evident in terms of all of the management readings you're looking at is they're they've taken the agile for you know philosophy and brought it into the broader business speak and business development, that idea of the agile transformation piece, you know? And that's great, except some of the claims that they're talking about in terms of what agile can do for an organization is being confused with claims of what agile can do in terms of helping develop the, deliver projects. Delivering projects still has the constraints that we all know about, you know? So some of those wider claims are poppycock for a better term. The second thing then is the idea of planning, you know? So planning, uh, requires a reference point. Agile is a little bit more flexible in terms of how that reference point looks like and the flexibility relates to change. But don't make a mistake of thinking there is no plan. There has to be a plan, right? Otherwise, it's not project management. And I've made the point in the past, the most important word in, in project management is management, you know? So management, by, by uh, definition, is about how you organize and how you deliver, you know? So planning is sacristan, no matter whether it's agile or uh, traditional product management, waterfall, or in between. And the third one then is don't get sucked into this servant leadership. You know, um, every there are multiple challenges and multiple situations that you will have to apply management skills to get through when it comes to managing projects, right? Sometimes you take a back seat. Sometimes you can facilitate consensus decision-making. But sometimes you've got to make certain calls, right? And not sitting back, you know, and, um, you know, uh, allowing, uh, you know, uh, drifted decision-making for what a better term to happen is, is huge. At the end of the day, project managers are responsible for delivering projects, you know? There are a bunch of other considerations that I did consider throwing on the menu here, you know? Um, I'm conscious of time, um, but Wajal, the role of project managers in the agile world. But I think the one thing I'd like to leave with, look, is how to make agile work better, you know? So I think if the agile expertise and the agile proponents, you know, don't push the boundaries to the next level, how do we improve the agile approach to managing projects? Then it'll become the traditional project management uh, way of doing things in five years or 10 years time. In fact, I've seen articles as recently as, as uh, this week, which is suggesting that Agile is old hat. And some of you in the software development space will know exactly what I'm talking about. Now we're at a different scenario. So embracing and expanding and enriching it is where I would suggest we go next. Katrina, I'll stop. You want to jump in? Is there questions? I'm sure there's a few no, that's people. Perfect. Yeah, I, I, I'm laughing because um, if you, we were we were talking earlier to everyone that's watching about would Agile come up? So I'm I will share my uh, screen here just really quickly, guys. So um, share the screen. Three or four steps to share the screen, but we will get there. Um, so I suppose let me let me go back really quickly just to say uh, and it, the, the numbers kind of panned out as they were at the at the start, which was um, kind of the vast majority of the audience was leaning towards um, beginner and intermediate. So we didn't have too many experts on the call. So hopefully um, they're not cringing into their cups of coffee going, what are these people talking about? But um, it's an interesting mix. But 
we, we also obviously, as you know, Terence, we have an interesting mix of organizations anyway. And we've had Agile come up in the past subjects and topics for the webinars. And, you know, we, we even had a webinar that focused on um, where whether there was a place for Agile in the pharmaceutical industry, for example, in terms of projects. So so I think it's it's always one that sort of comes up whether or not it suits the, the organization that the project manager is working in. Um, but yeah, but at least you kind of had a sympathetic audience where the vast majority are of the mindset of if it, if it works for my project, then I'm happy to use it, which I think is pretty good. Um, but the interesting one here is, is um, and somebody did pop Agile, Agile, Agile anybody. Um, and I think one of the ones yeah, that- yeah, Just um, on that, on, on, on yeah. the Agile piece, uh, uh, you know, and he, I, I've, I've yet to be convinced about Agile. You know, if it, for me, Agile sometimes gets positioned as the sort of get out of jail, you know, line into well, we could adopt the best of b both. You know, um, I think we we're, were talking before the call. You know, I, I was making the point yeah. look, that kind of reminds me of the win-win scenario. You know, I have never come across a win-win scenario, and I'm 60 years of age at this stage, and I've been around and done it. Right, the only time I've ever come across a win-win was a theoretical uh, situation where I think it was a to do with a oranges, an orange grove right where there was competition for the oranges and the answer turned out to be one of them wanted the juice and the other wanted the rind i mean okay that's win-win but you'll not get win-win i don't see the yhl piece now people will say maybe when it comes to requirements and requirements gathering and so on and so forth you know there's an element of that right but actually even the term makes me turn a bit you know well, but, but someone, and this is what I have heard, but this person has obviously not maybe had a great experience, but disgruntled PMPs. <laughs> I think we're being called out there. I might use that. Buy. Whoever put that on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the, I'll use that one. I have to say, I like that idea. <laughs> Calling it fragile. Um, uh, but yeah, there, there is a couple of, of, of positive experiences. There, there's one here that um, positive experience in a team that delivered value every month. Great sense of achievement among the team. But the prep was exhausting to get to that stage. So I think that's probably leaning into what you were saying earlier, which is yeah. like there, there, there is a plan. Like there, because I think a lot of our experiences, there is no plan with agile. You just run at it. But this, this suggests that people actually did put a huge amount of effort into the planning and the preparation, which is what made it so successful. Yeah, I mean the, the only thing to watch on that one is like, and that's a fundamental problem with agile, as some people see it, is that you know it's it's it's. It's it's relentless pace biases developers if you're looking at the software development space, you know, and getting a getting a yeah. minimal viable product out in weeks or months, you know, speed becomes the focus point. But sometimes when you're looking at speed, you do end up take cutting corners and planning, you know, sometimes suffers. Yeah. Um, I, this is one actually that kind of resonates with me a bit. It's a comment: a lot more meetings, stand up, spring planning, and retrospectives. Yeah. Um, I've had I, I've personally had this comment before, and one of the responses was, "You might have named them something else, but surely the developers and the you know the the architects were meeting just as often in in other methodologies because like communication is important essentially. Yeah. But we put a name to them now, we've put a badge to them, so they maybe come up as there's an awful lot more meetings involved in agile project management. I think there's a few, and again, I think you had one slide here, Ter uh, Terence, where you talked about, you know, the the different terminologies, um, and you had you had Kanban mentioned, and you had Scrum mentioned, yeah. etc. So there's, um, yeah, the only thing is, there's nearly as many uh, versions of agile techniques yeah. as there are Chelsea footballers, you know, that are pushed out on loan to come to clubs, you know. So, you know, there's really only three or four that resonate as as reference yeah. points. Others are more broader framework, so but that I, I would expect that to get better. Yeah, yeah. Kanban would be the one who I, I would be a supporter of as well, you know. Um, and again, part of that is there's some rule to that, you know. So there's a structure, there are rules, you know, and people still need that kind of structure in order to progress, you know, projects in particular. I'm just asking Ger for the audience, is there any questions for, for Terence before we wrap up? Um, I guess because a couple of people have made the comment and we obviously had a lot of beginners and intermediates that some people have done the, the training and they've taken the courses, but they haven't actually put it into practice yet. 
Uh, if you could give people one piece of advice in terms of, you know, stepping into your first agile um, project, what would what would that piece of advice be? Well, it, it depends on where you're coming from. You know, if you're, if you're coming from the sort of the traditional project management space, you know, uh, uh, first thing I would say is bite your lip. You know, um, and I mean that in the best sense of the, of the word because you know it's a different philosophy in the context of you know how 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 people. That whole idea of self-organization, right, uh, which is which is a core of what Agile focuses on, and um, so it's a different ballgame, and 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 therefore you need to take your time in that context. Look, understand the philosophy of servant leadership. You don't need to be a servant leader, but understand that's collective progression where possible. You should adopt that. I think for those who are you know who are coming without too much baggage in terms of the old dinosaur ways. I think understanding your role, right? Whether it's a developer, right? Whether it's, you know, the, 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 you've, you've got your scrum masters, your product owners and so on and so forth. So you need to understand the roles of the players. So for example, in the in uh, in Agile, the product owner is a huge role. And, you know, effectively, they're also the sponsor and the client. Yeah. So you need to understand the roles of those in the, in, in the Agile team. Very good. So, I mean, there's a question there that interested to see how project management principles around risk management are integrated into agile projects. Oh, <laughs> that's a lunchtime question, Ethan. All right. Um, <laughs> look, I think I think that's difficult because risk management, as a way of thinking, you know, is very structured. You know, most people on this call will have completed risk registers and you know color coded A, B, C, and D. You know. Um, uh, so therefore, the rigor and uh, structure around risk management is a, is a starting point. When it comes to agile, and, and layering that in, you can still and you still I still expect you to have a risk register and a risk focus on agile. But in the context of say what quite what category you'd be looking at, it may be slightly different. There may be you know a, a different element to it. But uh, I might take that one away and have a think more about that actually because uh, yeah, it's uh, but it's one. Risk management equals structure. Agile equals flexibility, you know? So the marriage will be interesting to see how that would work. Yeah, it is. I suppose you have mentioned it a few times in the presentation like, that agile doesn't mean no planning. Mm. So there is like, you know, thinking about the risks, the potential risks and potential opportunities in advance, like is always is always helpful. And it's not, um, it's not to be ignored, I suppose, in, um, it's not to be ignored in agile it just it's not it's not just for waterfall i suppose i would hope not otherwise it's, i don't um, hairs for all wrong reasons <laughs> very good i will look uh, guys there's a, there's a good few questions coming in i think agile has has always become important and you heard taryn speak earlier about the the latest version of pinbock which uh which which is bringing agile into it and, and the questions in the exams are bringing um the agile thought process into it as well so it's definitely topical for us um and it's here to stay i think was the exact term that you used it is here to stay so uh, we, we probably need to grasp the nettle maybe a little bit more and and get stuck into the detail so quite a lot of people in the comments have had done the training or gone and done the certification so there's clearly an interest in it which i think is good as well um but um i i guess we, we probably just have to find our feet a little bit more with it so um which is a yeah, kind of for, for those of you who are who are on the pmp journey at the moment, yeah. the questions on Agile, uh, and there's quite a few of them, are, are at the top level. You know, yeah. to other words, you don't need to know the ins and outs of Kanban versus Scrum yeah. versus yeah. exactly, you know, but so it's, it's quite a high level, right? So it's, it's more the philosophical type questions. Now, I suspect that maybe yeah. next year when the data bank gets replenished to another level, that the level of questions on Agile might be a little bit more, you know, yeah. detailed, you know? Yeah, and I, I think Neve has made a good point here as well, is that um, maybe maybe the teams don't recognise the amount of planning, uh, but somebody did comment here, you know, in, in the Minty poll that, you know, there are stand-ups, there are sprint planning, there's retrospectives, there's actually a lot of communication going on in, in Agile, in the various different forms that, that people are using. So, yeah, they may not call it, let's have a risk planning meeting or risk review meeting, but they're doing it. And they're definitely doing lessons learned by virtue of the retrospectives. So, there's a lot of the boxes are being ticked for, you know for for those of us nervous about making the plunge away from from them um, waterfall and diving into agile okay 
I, I, I have a client with him for me now, so I, I there you go. Yeah, so that's, that's perfect timing, maybe just to say um, to everybody, uh, thanks very much for for joining us. Uh, like it, it's always um, a topic that's of great interest to everybody in turn. It's obviously great for our members to to hear you talk about about it as well and get your experience. So, just remains for me to say to everyone, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks very much for participating as well. Uh, we will share the recording and Terence, I'll, I'll, I'll share your slides as well with our members in the next couple of, of um, days so that you can you can access that as well. And, um, yeah, and, and, and by the way, you know, I'm happy that you can you can share the PowerPoint presentations there. there if people can okay. use them just acknowledged that I have some copyrights for sources I got, but they're, they may be useful for yeah. for the group. Absolutely. So thank you very much. So thanks to everyone who joined us and Terence, thanks once again for presenting to our members today. Okay, that's that's a wrap, folks. Thank you very much.